Spring is in the air and today's skills and drills of free motion machine quilting is gonna take you on a journey flying with those geese. Let's get started. If that sounds odd, I apologize, but yes, I was looking for some fun springtime free motion quilting motifs. I was working on some quilts and I thought a springtime design would be really cool for this. I didn't really find anything that hit, but then I saw this really cool quilt. It was a whole cloth quilt and they'd used the flying geese element over and over in different sizes and different directions in this whole cloth quilt. And I thought, fantastic, won't this be fun to show everybody at home how we can use flying geese and some of these different fill-in styles to make all kinds of cool things happen in our quilt. So if you're a modern quilter or a whole cloth quilter, I'm hoping this is a great tutorial for you. Cause I, like I said, I see a lot of this showing up in the open space, the background space, or often the flying geese. And if you don't even know this term, it's kind of this channel of triangles you see here. Usually it's a patchwork term, but this element I see dividing parts and quilts that are for other styles of free motion machine quilting. So anyways, it's really, really fun. It's the same thing over and over again, and I'm gonna walk you through a couple of different fills. Now my personal favorite fill is the fill that you see right here, and it's the fill where the machine was just going back and forth between the framework and the triangle. I really like this one in comparison to this one right here where the lines are actually going up and down instead of side to side. I felt like it really altered the look of it and it, funny enough, it made a big difference. And that's why I want you to make yourself some fun samples. I want you practicing. No stitches wasted. We're just not using them in our quilts. We're getting better when we're ready for our real quilts, right? Another really fun uh, fill that I really like here is this simple grid. And then of course our micro stippling works wonderful as well to fill in to get some relief to these fabulous little triangles. And I'm doing it in high contrast colors today, but often this would be done with the exact same color thread as your background fabric. So you're just getting the pucker out of what you're doing. Now, it'll be easier if I show you by drawing it. So let's do that for you too. I've got a smaller sample. We're just gonna talk about one of these today. And we need to build our framework or think of this like a ladder first. So I'm building the sides of our ladder, but it's going to have an arc to it. I've got a chalk pencil right now, and I'm just going to take one line and I'm going to create an arc. And I'm going to make this nice and big because it's my practice piece. Now, I'm thinking free motion, so I don't want to lift my pencil. It may be hard for you to see up there, but I'm going to come back down this way and I'm building myself roughly a quarter inch channel and I'll use my free motion foot to keep those distances appropriate. So these are just guidelines. Now, I'm also gonna follow in down across here, and this is the area where the geese are gonna lay. So I wanna make this wide enough that we can really do something fun with it down here. Then I'm gonna follow this back up, and this is kinda how I make things more narrow, is I use the second line to reduce. And then, cause my needle is still up here, I'm gonna follow this back down. So teaching you how to do this without lifting or having to cut thread there. And then from this moment, I'm gonna swing back in and I'll start my triangles, but I don't need to draw in the lines of the triangles, but you most certainly could. If you want to, you can just do straight lines. Well, let's talk about this because I think this is important. These look like squares. So I want this line here to kind of go perpendicular or make a T shape against these outer lines. So I don't want these crazy angles. I want these lines here like this to kind of be running parallel to each other as they go up through the arc. If I put too many in there, it just makes me feel nervous. So at any rate, as you see it start to happen with needle and thread, I think it'll make the most sense. Now, I have a sew slip mat on the bed of my machine, which is just gonna reduce the friction and make this travel real nicely. And I also have my machine girl's gloves on my hand here. So I wanna start myself down here. Now, if you're on a real quilt project, obviously you're starting in a place that won't be obvious. Right now, I'm gonna start right here because I have to start somewhere <laughs> and I'm on a practice piece. So I'm gonna take one stitch to bring my thread to the top. We're gonna secure that. And I'm just gonna get rolling up that first chalk line. That's all I've gotta do first. I need to stop and kind of reposition so I can see what's happening here. And if it's easiest, you can always just turn your fabric. As long as your needle is not moving up and down, you can always rotate your quilt. Now I can see what I'm doing better. So let's go ahead and finish this line. 
I'm also using polyester thread while I practice because polyester thread is a little bit stronger than cotton. It's actually a lot stronger than cotton. And it's a little more forgiving because of that strength. So even if I'm a disaster at free motion quilting, my body mechanics are not nearly as affected by the thread there. Now, like I said, I'm gonna come around this arc and now I'm just using the edge of my presser foot and I'm watching the edge of my presser foot along the sewing I had already done to try to give myself a somewhat symmetrical, evenly spaced side to my ladder here or framework. As we come around here towards the bottom, I'm gonna stop again, reposition my hands so that I can come right to this point. Now, I am at the wide part going towards the narrow part of the arc, so I want the straight edge to the points going towards the arc as well. So that means I'm at a straight edge across the bottom. My next point is gonna hit right in the middle of this chalked line that you may or may not be able to see. So from here, I'm gonna go straight up to that point in my brain. And then I'm gonna go back down to that corner. Now, at this moment, we have a decision to make because we will be following one of our rails always. And I wanna follow the same side of the rail both times. And I like to follow what I consider the underside of the arc. So for me, I'm gonna actually follow the straight line back down so that I am on the underside of the arc. And now I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna follow that rail up. I'm gonna go straight across. I really wanna hit that tip. And I really wanna park right on that other rail, okay? Now from here up, I can go up to the point. So I'm heading to the point from the opposite corner this time. And down, but now I'm on that rail again. So now I can run the rail over here Come up. And at this point, I'm gonna make all of my triangles because I'm learning how to do flying geese as a motif. After I learned enough triangles, I actually learned at this point, I could be doing fill in at the same point I'm creating the triangles, but let's not get carried away today. Let's just go up to that center point, back down here, follow that rail, Come across here, hit that point. Now I am effectively out of chalk, so I'm going to come up here. My triangles are gonna to start to get smaller because my arc is getting smaller. So that's an imaginary line I created. I come across here and I catch it. I'm gonna make a slightly smaller triangle. Come across here, catch it. So your triangles follow the path of the arc. And you most certainly can chalk them in if you want, or you can do them somewhat eyeball and freestyle. Whatever you're most comfortable with. I want to get these down so I can show you a couple fill motifs and then turn you loose in your sewing room. Whoops, you see what I just did? I started talking and wasn't thinking. I started up that rail, my bad. And there's no way around that except for to back back down, making that obvious. Maybe not talk so much while you're quilting. It's a very rhythmic little design here. Oop, did it again. Now I want to keep doing it. Oh no, I've got a bad habit I've started.
And now as I'm approaching this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I want to make sure it kind of fits and in symmetrically. So I made one last little tight one in there. And at this moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this threads off. So I'm taking a few stitches in place, lifting my presser foot, bringing my needle up, and I'm going to drag my thread out here so I can cut. And hopefully when I cut this, it will have cut the bobbin as well. If not, I'll go ahead and catch that. Because it's all free and clean, and it'll be easier for you to see these fills if we start down here on the bigger zone. So the first fill I mentioned that I like was a side-to-side -side fill. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I'm going to bring my needle thread up. Like, yay. And then once this is, I'm basically going to really try to respect those lines I've created and go all the way to them each time. And I'm just kind of going back and forth, back and forth in a, what would be horizontal motion, or I guess it's vertical at the moment because the way the thing is, but it's horizontal to my triangles. The key is with the fill, whatever density you start is the density you want to hold throughout the whole process. I can pick up speed as I get a little more confident. And you can do all the left sides and then all the right sides. So I would come here, let's say, then I follow this line and there here I am. I just fill this in. And pick up the pace a little bit. The thing that's tricky about this is your distances change each time. Or I could come across the top point and I can come back in to fill. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to sew over this line a few times. See, I'm missing on purpose because what I had that happen on a couple of my triangles, just as an idea, then what I did is when I came back in here to fill, to get back up, I kind of filled this line. And if I had to, I filled it a couple times. Because then visually what that does is it breaks out and it gives a nice sharp line. So if you stitch past where you're supposed to, do all your stitching and then come back in and get one more fill if you can. Now, that's real easy. This is another really fun one because you can go anywhere. Gas power it up a little bit and it's the micro stippling. The key with micro stippling though is to try not to be crossing over too much and make it all look the same, and that for me is a little tough. But it is neat to have it all filled in around those triangles. And the micro stippling, you can really sneak around into different locations and not show where you've been using as your entrance and exit points. So the micro stippling can be really fun, like this. And then the last one I'll work my way up towards, I really liked doing, and I thought looked really cool when it was done, especially in some of these modern quilts, is the grid in the background. So watch me do that. Although as it gets smaller, it's gonna be a little more tricky. So for the grid, what I did is I came up in here back to a point and I ran first one direction of lines. We're gonna just call these our horizontal lines. And I'm using the bars and I'm using the triangles as my start and stop. So this actually, as much as I like it, takes a long time to do because you wanna be real accurate and precise with your work. And sometimes I'm going straight and sometimes I'm traveling at these angles. So it was a little bit more challenging for me uh, quality wise. And then I would come back down here and I'm gonna fill in the other side of this as well. And then again, if you need to, you're gonna follow the bottom of your triangle over to do your grid. Just try not to round your corners. Try to keep your corners as straight as possible on your grid. And then try to keep all the grids the same in the back of the different squares as you go around so that as you're working, you get some really fun and cool motifs. Let's bring this out of the machine so maybe you can see a little bit better what we were doing here. And you can see what will happen as you work through filling in those flying geese. And just because I did the outsides of the triangles, don't forget, a lot of times you can fill in the triangles themselves as part of that motif. I've seen all kinds of different add-ons by adding new little lines inside of these triangles and all kinds of different stuff. So 
Hopefully I was able to break this down for you in a nice methodical way that you saw the sidebars go in first, the lines to fill, fill in your triangles, then your triangles and then your fill. And then as I bring back this piece together for you, if you want to have some real fun on an afternoon, lay out your practice piece just like I did, right? And then pull out that chalk pencil and start drawing yourself some new lines and start creating for yourself some new angles and some new things that you can play with. And after you've done one, draw in the rest, make them weave in and out and just go absolutely bananas because this is why we do what we do. We are quilters and we love it. Be proud. Okay, so get into your studios, get yourselves covered with thread, and we will see you right here next time at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.